Hey, let's hear it for Chris, everybody. Let's give it up for Chris. My mother received the phone call around 2 a.m. Hello? <laughs> Mrs. Coppage? Y y yes? Mrs. Coppage, this is Officer Daniels from the Thornton Police Department. We have two of your sons in custody, a Christopher Allen and a Brian Anthony, at the Yorkboro Housing Complex, and we're going to need you to come and pick them up. W w what? N no, my boys are in bed asleep. Mrs. Coppage? Um, they're dressed as ninjas. <laughs> Shit. The Midsummer's Evening began as any other Midsummer's Evening, with my little brother Brian, his best friend Greg, and myself, waiting for my mother to fall asleep so we could go outside ninjing. Ninjing was a hobby we picked up in the early 1980s as a result of watching far too many ninja flicks. Yes, it was geeky, and yes, we were pretty serious about it. We would dress all in black from head to foot with nothing exposed but our eyes, and our utility belt of homemade exotic ninja weaponry? Well, that, my friends, that would have made Batman proud. On this particular evening, we targeted the construction company Hydrocon Duet. Hydrocon Duet manufactured large cement cylinders for stormwater and sewage drains. The challenge was to penetrate the property, climb to the highest structure, which was a four to five story sand belt, tie a black bandana to the top of it, and then exit. Why, you may ask? Because. <laughs> Simply because. Thus, we went about acquiring the proper tools necessary to perform the job. A small set of cable cutters to breach the fence. Hamburger laced with sleeping pills to sedate the guard dogs. <laughs> Flour mixed with laundry detergent and black pepper to blind the security guards. <laughs> and Dixie cups filled with a quarter inch of gunpowder to cause a bright flash to disable the photosensitive security lights. Once the lights were disabled, we would have a three to four minute window to complete the mission. Yes, we would have made MacGyver proud as well, as all of this was simply a result of our teenage ingenuity. Or should I say, our teenage ninjanuity. But when we arrived at Hydrocon Do It, to our dismay, we found that there were no security guards or guard dogs. In fact, there was a large hole in the fence through which we could simply crawl. There was little need to light up the Dixie Cups, as the extent of the security was a rusted old sign that read, No Trespassing. And somehow, we mustered the collective courage to overcome that obstacle. Once inside, we easily made our way to the top of the belt, tied the bandana, and left. It was a very anticlimactic ninja-based mission. As the night wore on, out of boredom, we began to wrestle around with one another. And I'm sure to the casual observer, this would have appeared as a very misguided and somewhat sexually confused affair. <laughs> and Greg himself must have found it slightly arousing, because shortly after this episode, he, su he suggested that we go over to his girlfriend's house, Leanne's. <laughs> and so... Dressed in black, carrying a large arsenal of exotic weaponry upon our backs, we began to nonchalantly stroll throughout the neighborhood. Because not only are we geeks, but we are idiots as well. <laughs> as we nestled down outside of Leanne's bedroom window, Greg and Leanne began to coo at one another. My little brother and I noticed that Kelly, Leanne's best friend and neighbor from across the street, is watching us through her own bedroom window. And so we wave as she swiftly draws the blinds not realizing what this must appear like from Kelly's point of view, and not realizing that Kelly is actually sitting next to her distraught father, who is in a three-way phone conversation with Leanne's dad and 911. <laughs> they are currently discussing the three nefarious figures sitting outside of Leanne's bedroom window. As my little brother and I, we are currently discussing how pretty Kelly is. And it was this distraction of beauty that would lead to our ultimate demise. Because at that very moment, unbeknownst to our heightened ninja senses, we were being surrounded by a large number of heavily armed police officers. As both fathers had armed themselves as well and sat just within their home. Meanwhile, 
Greg is kissing Leanne. <laughs> My little brother and I spy the front end of a police vehicle, barely visible at the end of the block. We tap Greg on the shoulder and say, dude, we should totally go. As we rise from our crouched positions and ever so casually begin to saunter away from the house, as soon as our feet hit the sidewalk, the neighborhood explodes with life. Tires screech around corners as police vehicles slide into defensive positions. Spotlights flood the area, blinding our eyes. Car doors are flung open as silhouetted police officers scamper about into strategic stances to gain a beat on us with their weapons. A bullhorn barks out. Put your hands above your head. Time suddenly slows. And all I can think is, damn, I should have made a smoke pellet. <laughs> but instead, lay face down on the ground. Interlace your fingers behind your head. Don't move. A hurricane of police officers rains down upon us like a zombie up. Apocalypse, pressing boots in the back of our necks, aiming shotguns at our heads. Our hands are tightly cupped behind our backs as we are de-hooded and violently stripped of all of our weapons and utilities. I hear a policeman's voice, somewhat puzzled. What the hell? Are these guys ninjas? <laughs> Holy shit, we just caught some ninjas. It was shortly after that moment that my mother received the phone call at 2 a.m. <laughs>